So the barbecue will be delivered uh, by truck and needs to be dropped off. As you can see the unit fits in the back of a uh, shorter bed truck uh, can be delivered or picked up. So I'll record the basic features of the uh, barbecue unit. You'll need two um, electrical connections, one for the fan and one for the actual motor that turns the spit or the uh, cage. As you can see, rather than a spit, we do have a cage unit and the animal sits inside that. These bars are adjustable and you adjust those such that the animal is held tight within the cage. And the cage is designed to turn at one revolution per minute, which gives a nice even roasting to the pig. At the back of the unit you'll see there's a drip tray which catches the grease and the drippings. These can be captured if you want in a bucket at the back for use for future cooking or just to drain off. At the bottom front of the unit is the grill plates for setting the coals on. We found that the best way to cook is to put the coals at each end up here and here, pile them there and adjust the piles according to the heat that you need. You'll notice too that underneath the grate is a tray that's for collecting and removing the ashes. The cage is connected at each end with these bolts into the bearing on this end and onto the drive at this end. These are there so that you can remove them for cleaning of the cage after use. We also provide this uh, unit where you can start the coals. We found that it's better to start the coals in, outside of the barbecue unit so that you can work with the animal and uh, then put them into the uh, unit as needed. The electric starter will start those coals just fine. They take about five minutes to get going. There's also a uh, funnel, chimney on the top, and a heat gauge. And you can do some further adjustment of the heat by opening or either putting a can on top of the funnel. There's lots of ways to move that heat up and down. Wooden handle makes it easier to use. The uh, four wheels all lock so that the unit is held in place and as a reminder it's very important to run the fan uh, against the motor so that it is cooled through the whole operation. So here's the pig we're going to be roasting on the pig barbecue tonight. It's about 58 and a half pounds and one of the things that we didn't organize was to have the legs pulled forward uh, which when they're sticking out like this creates a problem for the rotisserie. So we're going to carve these ends legs off here, put them in the belly so they'll still cook with the pig and that way it'll fit into the cage uh, and not uh, create any problems for the rotisserie. Our stuffing this year is going to be uh, apples and oranges and they're just rough quartered. Uh, they'll be put in to fill the cavity along with the, uh, the leg ends that we're cutting off. Now comes the sewing up. You'll notice that with the barbecue came a, uh, a steel uh, needle and steel wire. So you'll see, you get it started and there is a spring circle on the end of the wire. Use that as your anchor point. And we'll sew back and forth through that. And you can see the Belly's really well stuffed with the fruit and the legs. This is where a pair of pliers will also be helpful because uh, it just makes it much easier to get that stainless steel needle through. So while the pig is being prepared it's a good time to start the coals. This unit will allow you to start the coals outside of the, uh, the barbecue itself. The, uh, 
electrical starter gets put in there, switched on, and this will start building while we're finishing off with the pig. So as you'll see, the uh, steel wire has done a really nice job of closing up the cavity. And now Yannick is just finishing off with uh, sticking it deep into the, the belly there. And there it is, all trussed, ready to go. Now is the time when we need to put it into the uh, mesh wrap before it goes into the cage. So now what we're going to do is we're going to wrap the mesh that's going to hold the pig real tight together through the rotisserie process. And there are clips on the uh, one side of this that allows you to pull it real tight around the animal. So the pig is now resting in the uh, cage, in the rotisserie cage, and you'll notice that you don't want anything sticking out past the cage that's going to hit on turning. And we want to have enough, it deep enough that we're going to be able to put the bars across here to hold it in place. to twist and turn the pig and figure it out until you get it locked in. What you want is you want it to be really tightly held because it will shrink and then start to loosen up on, as it ro rotates. So here it is in the cage. All four lock pins are in place. They'll hold that nice and tight. As I said it will shrink and loosen off and you may have to adjust halfway through. So there are the coals, uh, they're starting up nicely. So now we're going to take those and we're going to put them at either end of the barbecue because that's where the thickest part of the meat is. So we will go on this end here and this end here and we won't put anything in the middle. And then we'll actually put uh, what we call smoke pouches, uh, which is uh, wet wood wrapped in aluminum foil on top of the coals. Okay, so here we have uh, a pile of coals at each end. We'll be putting the smoke packs on in a little while once we've got up to temperature. Now really important is to uh, run both the fan and the rotisserie. So there's two, you'll need a receptacle for two cords. And as you can see, the roast is underway. Now the foil is just protecting the ears so that they don't burn off. And now the trick is going to be to bring it up to the 350 degrees and maintain it there. So we'll be using spray bottles to cool it down, water from the wood, opening the lid, closing the lid, whatever is necessary to maintain that temperature. So we started this uh, pig roaster at 10.30. It's now uh, 5 past 11 and as you can see the heat's coming up pretty good. It's just over 250. Uh, we've got to get it up to 350 and then we can uh, open the lid and control the heat then. So here we are now about three hours into it you can see the skin is starting to split and um, we've managed to get it up to the 350 and keep it there. Now we're going to start to slow it down a little. We have to worry about a 6.30 dinner so we're going to slow it down just a little. So here we are, it's around 3 o'clock, so it's been in about uh, four and a half hours. We've probably kept the temperature average at about 325. In the last hour and a half, it's gone up 20 degrees. So here we are, at, uh, it's now 4 o'clock. It's now been in for five and a half hours. And we're registering close to 145 degrees. We have about another 20 to go. Okay, so it's now 4, 4.45 in the afternoon. We started at 10.30. The pig is just about up to temperature, so we're now going to pull some of the coals out. We're going to let it rest. And uh, we're actually going to try and put a little bit of brine on the uh, skin um, with uh, hot water and salt. 
uh, just to see if we can crisp it up a little bit more for enjoyment. Okay, so here we are, it's now 5.30. Our target was for 6.30 meal. Um, this is now within two degrees of being cooked. We're just going to let it rest. We're going to pull the coals back and, uh, and just let it uh, sit and it'll be ready just in time. So here we are, it's 6.30. And we promised we'd be cooking, cutting the pig by then and here we are. So, professional chef, how is it cutting? It's cutting very nice. Great, thank you. So this is a real West Coast barbecue. Complete with rain, web feet, beautifully cooked pork. What a great event. Now for cleaning the barbecue, the uh, cage itself, the big cage here, has a locking pin on each end that needs to be taken out and the whole cage can be lifted out of there. The drip tray at the back also comes out so that can be power washed off. And then the, uh, the biggest job probably is the mesh bag uh, which you need to take the time with SOS pads to get all the uh, meat off it. The ashes uh, can be, and uh, coals can be tipped out of the grate and then they can be emptied out through the bottom of the uh, grid and then the inside of the uh, unit can be power washed at that point. Be careful not to use the power washer or anything like the bearings or the motor. Thank you.